So during the introduction, I introduced you to the infection chapter in the British National Formulary. Now the most important thing about the infection chapter is largely it's to do with the antibiotics. And antibiotics, you have to know the drug classes fairly well and you have to understand that some antibiotics fall within high risk groups. So we're going to go through two different high risk antibiotic groups. The first one being the aminoglycosides and the second one being glycopeptides. So when I say aminoglycosides, you have five examples. You have gentamicin, you have amikacin, neomycin, streptomycin, and tobramycin. These are your five different examples when I talk about aminoglycosides. The way in which they work is they're bactericidal. So you have two different types of antibiotics. You have bacteriostatic and you have bactericidal. Bacteriostatic means it inhibits the growth of bacteria and eventually it allows its way to overcome the bacteria. Whereas bactericidal kill the bacteria. So aminoglycosides are bactericidal antibiotics and the way in which they work is they bind to ribosomes and then they inhibit protein synthesis. They're active against some of the gram-positive organisms such as staphylococci and they're active against most gram-negative organisms. So that's the way in which you should understand the spectrum of activity on a basic level for aminoglycosides. If you want more details about aminoglycosides, I'd recommend you watch a video that I'm just going to link up here where I go to, into aminoglycosides in much more detail. So, what sort of indications would aminoglycosides for, be used against? So, it can be used for endocarditis, it can be used in a few cases for septicemia, meningitis, as well as pneumonia. There are a few side effects that you have to think about in relation to aminoglycosides, and these are some serious side effects associated to aminoglycosides. So like with every antibiotic, there are side effects, and some would be more clinically important in terms of their severity. So a few of the serious side effects include impairment of neuromuscular trans transmission. And the reason why these side effects will be important is they lead to cautions and contraindications relate related to the antibiotic. You've then got the fact that aminoglycosides can cause irreversible autotoxicity. They can cause nephrotoxicity antibiotic associated colitis which is a risk associated with all antibiotics peripheral neuropathy and electrolyte disturbances one thing that's important to note with aminoglycosides is they're not absorbed well from the gut and this means that they should be given intravenously for the large majority of its indications except for one for example neomycin can be used for bowel sterilization so it utilizes the fact that it's not absorbed well from the gut so like i said to you before we have to then consider the side effects and then consider the contraindications and cautions so i did say to you it impairs neuromuscular transmission therefore it should be used in caution with patients with myasthenia gravis I then said to you that it can cause irreversible autotoxicity and therefore it should not be used with autotoxic drugs. An example of autotoxic drugs are cisplatin and furosemide. You should avoid using it with nephrotoxic drugs as it is nephrotoxic itself and this includes vancomycin as well as cyclosporin. So, considering all of these factors in relation to aminoglycosides, what sort of monitoring do you expect to be required with aminoglycosides? So the, most initial, the initial one is looking at renal impairment 
or renal function, monitoring the renal function to identify any renal impairment. The other thing is looking at auditory and vestibular function due to the fact that it can cause irreversible autotoxicity. And that's why you need to counsel patients to state that if they hear any ringing in the ears, which is known as tinnitus, or if they have any hearing loss, to report it immediately, as well as looking at the serum concentration. The serum concentration is particularly important because it has a narrow therapeutic range or narrow therapeutic index. A lot of these values may change between different trusts, but on a general level, and what it states in the British National Formulary, is that if you're giving a multi multiple daily dose of gentamicin, the one hour level, which is known as the peak level, should be between five to 10 milligrams per liter. If you're using it for endocarditis, these values would be lower, between three to five milligrams per liter. The pre-dose level, should be less than two milligrams per liter and for endocarditis it should be lower less than one milligram per liter and in terms of once daily regimens these should be in accordance with local guidelines this concludes amino glycosides in the next video i want to go through glycopeptides which include examples such as vancomycin